everyone, I just want to show you a really fast demo on how to use ink on watercolor paper and also ink on mylar and then how to use the mylar to create transparent layers in your artwork. Uh, first I want you to use a pencil and draw out your overall composition. I would, ha I would suggest drawing all the layers you first intend to have in your composition and put all those shape basic shapes in. And then once you get all those basic shapes laid out, I just want you to block in the very first layer, which would be the very background layer and whatever image you plan to use. Um, right here you can see I'm using a wet on wet technique where I'm using wet ink on top of wet ink and then I'm um, using a rag to actually pull some of that ink back up off the paper. The, the ink is actually pretty um, forgiving. You can, especially on this type of watercolor paper, you can really lift up a lot of ink back up off the paper. You might want to re-wet the surface and then like use a rag to pick it back up or use your paintbrush to pick it back up if you need to. Uh, you can also use a dry brushing technique where you have um, just ink on your brush and then you kind of wipe some of the ink off and then use the dry brush to make s specific marks on your paper. Everything I'm doing in this um, this demo here is wet on wet just because I didn't have the time to let everything everything to dry. Uh, for wet on wet, what you want to do is you're going to basically wet the paper first and then you're going to keep adding ink and it's going to give that like, it's going to have the ink run into, um, run into the water and run around the paper and it's going to kind of blend and bleed into itself as you can see here in this, um, this area of, of the woods I'm trying to draw. So for the background you don't really want to put too too much detail. You want to go kind of dark with it and you you don't want to make it too too vague because when you add two layers of mylar paper on top of it because it's frosted it is going to uh, mute out the detail and mute out and tone down the, va the values of everything. The ink actually dries a lot lighter than what it is whenever it's wet so you want to watch out for that and see how dry, how um, how light it is once it dries. You can see here in this one area I kept going back and forth underneath the layer of mylar paper and repainting. I don't suggest doing that. I saw that nice texture that it was giving and I was and I really liked it so I kept pushing it back there but then it really flattened out my space once all my layers dry dried. So I would wait till everything's dry before you go back into the under layers just so you can get a feeling of what it looks like um, with all the ink dry because you're going to think it's a lot darker, go back into the bottom layer under the mylar paper, your first or second layer, and you're going to end up making it too dark. And that's what I ended up doing here. So the mylar paper, it kind of, it's pretty absorbent. It does take a little bit of time to dry. You can blow dry it. Dry it. Uh, it's kind of a slippery surface. You can see that I sprayed in that area. I sprayed nail polish remover, so if you want to give that particular texture. You can use a nail polish remover spray in a bottle, any kind of bottle, to give that texture. And then to create a pulling effect, you can actually use ammonia. And I, I use that throughout the, this entire drawing. I go back and forth between using nail polish remover to make those like little white dots and ammonia to put, make pools of the black ink come together. And I'm just keeping everything like really loose and really gestural and kind of having fun because Ink is generally a looser medium. You can go really tight with it if you want, but I suggest letting yourselves be a little bit more loose with it. Um, I'm using white charcoal pen or white charcoal or white Conte crayon, or you can use white paint to bring some whites out on this. I know you guys all have white charcoal, so if you want to go back into the drawing with white charcoal to bring some lights out, you can do that. Okay, now I'm on my third layer of mylar paper. And I'm going back over the trees and everything again. I I wish I didn't do this because it made it just kind of flattened the image out. I thought that it needed to be a little bit darker than what it was, but in retrospect, retrospect I wouldn't do that. So I would treat every layer like I explained to you guys before as a background, mid-ground, and foreground. I ended up using four pieces of mylar paper to uh, because I did this and I needed to fix it because I basically got rid of you know, a layer of space by going back over the trees and all the areas with the same exact ink, or with the ink in the same exact areas. A blow dryer to push the ink around and also just to dry some areas of it because I didn't have a lot of time to just wait for it to dry. And I'm on my fourth piece of mylar. 
So you can see all the depth that I have there now that I have those trees in there. And I'm gonna go back in and I'm, I am added a fourth layer. And I'm just making this layer up as I go, just to br bring some space and more depth into the drawing. You always want to start light to dark whenever you're using ink. If you go too dark, like I said before, all of this paper is pretty for forgiving, so you can pick it back up over and over and over again. But a general rule of thumb for ink is you want to work light to dark. Opposite of what we did with charcoals. Now I'm going back into my bottom layers and I'm adding a few, um, a little bit more depth to these layers just so it doesn't jump from mid-ground to foreground too drastically and the depth and the spacing makes sense. And I'm going over it with charcoal now. I wanted to incorporate some charcoal in it. Also, I didn't have time to keep going over layers and layers of ink and waiting for it to dry, so charcoal was a quick fix to get those dark, dark values in there that I wanted. So there's the final result with the charcoal, then I decided to go back in with some white paint and just kind of bring some more contrast value out. So that's everything. Um, it's pretty simple. I suggest using, you can see in my images, well actually no you can't, I meant to show you, but I suggest having one cup for cleaning your brushes and then one cup for dipping your ink into. And you're gonna have to clean out your water cups quite frequently because the 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 ink cup will, or the cup that you're using just to like use as like a diluting element will get really dark really fast. So you're gonna have to like switch in and out of, wa out of water a lot, but I suggest starting with two cups of water to, to begin with. And that's everything. So if you guys have any questions on this and as you're working with ink, it takes a while to get used to, uh, just, you know, feel free to email me, shoot me a text, ask me any questions that you have. All right, thanks guys.